course, I am Claire, I'm principal consultant at Alenials at Work. What we do at Alenials at Work is we help medium large enterprises to attract, retain, and mm -hmm. engage their millennial and Gen Z employees. Yes. So yeah, that's in an essence of what we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, Claire, today we are really here to understand some of your thoughts about how to engage millennials. I mean, let's start with why it's so hard. Why is it so hard to engage them? Why is it so hard to engage them? So, uh, so let's look at the millennials in general when they were born. So they were born 1982 to 1996. That, so that's pretty wide generational demographic there. Yeah. But let's look. Let's also look at the fact that there has been a lot of changes happening in that world. What was mm -hmm. happening in the 1980s, 1990s? Computers, internet, and so on. And the younger they are, they don't remember holding one of those phone cords and try, like trying to get a reach of people you only yeah. see them in office settings nowadays and when we consider those factors and when we consider the availability of information and so on mm -hmm. of course it's hard to grab their attention it's not that millennials um particular uh, younger ones or gen z it's not that they don't want to pay attention it's just that there are so many yeah. things going on at once mm -hmm. and they have uh, and they have access to mobile devices and internet and yeah. things like that. So their attention span is a lot shorter and it is a lot trickier to continue to retain their interest. So that's why it's really hard to engage millennials. Yeah. So Claire, just now you spoke about Gen Z. I mean, uh, millennials are not a homogeneous group, right? I mean, do you want to talk a bit more about yeah, the course, unique challenges with like X, Y, Z? Yeah, um, so Generation X are, um, that is like, so that is like 1970s mostly. Yeah. So um, <laughs> they call um, Generation X, they don't really highlight them too much in media, but they also don't create much <laughs> issues per yeah, se. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's that. Generation Y, that is the millennial, the nineteen, the people that are born between 1982 to yep. 1996. Mm -hmm. Some media might call it 1995. And when it comes to looking at millennials, again, there because there were so many changes happening within that time period, even though it's been 14 years, um, it is important uh, how I like to um, describe it is you, you actually – divide them into two different segments mm -hmm. you divide them into um 1980 so the ones that are from 1982 to about 1989 and then 1989 and onwards mm -hmm. so you can call them older millennials and younger millennials so if to talk about a difference between them so older millennials if you look at where they are right now, they are in their 30s. Some of them are inching on 40s. Yep. They, they, they finish their education. They are settled. They might have a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. And so on. And also when you look at how they grew up, they might not have always grown up with cell phones. Their first cell phones might have been one of those um, Nokia keypad Yeah, cell phones. yeah, yeah. I remember and those. And they yeah. might have had a little bit of trouble adjusting to touch screen mm -hmm. so with um so that's the segment and when it comes to the jaw popping aspect of it i wouldn't say it applies as much to this generation anymore only because it can be a little bit tricky to just say okay i am gonna quit my job i am gonna go move to antarctica and yeah. Um, and then I am going to feed penguins as my part-time job. It yeah, can be a little yeah. bit hard to do that when you have two kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, well, when you're looking at younger millennials, so 1989 to 1996, this is where people get really confused. And that when people think of job-popping generations, millennials being all whatever negative stereotypes about millennials, that's typically the generation because yeah. they're still young. They're still um, not uh, not even in their 30s or so, or maybe they might have just become 30. Mm -hmm. And this particular segment of millennial generation, they definitely have phones. 
and they yeah. even, they definitely had internet of some sorts, even if it's not love internet. And the further you go, like for example, I um, like I'm I'm considered a cusp between millennial and Gen Z because I was like born towards the end. Yeah. So personally, I don't remember growing up without internet. I remember going and walking into elementary school, and there are computer devices. Yeah. So just by just by second these into two different segments you can mm-hmm. you, you can tell okay, okay here was like what technology was like growing up here is where they are at right now it can it is drastically different yeah and if you then for gen z 1995 and on uh, 1996 and onwards they haven't figured out the cutoff exactly yet mm-hmm. but um so when you're the gen z is I would say the younger millennials and Gen Z has a lot more in common mm-hmm. than older millennials and Gen Z. And when you're looking at Gen Z, their first phone, like I like to use phone as a mechanism to symbolize, okay, here's what here's where the society is at because I feel that's yeah. more universal. Mm-hmm. I know that some um, people, some experts like to use pop culture, but I feel phone is something that most countries will understand no matter yeah. where you are at. Yeah. So Generation Z, their first phone was some sort of touch phone or some sort of key, like some sort of, um, you you turn it open, the phone's partially touch screen, yeah. and then there's a keyboard. Mm-hmm. That's Generation Z. And you might have also seen them in TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. don't use Snapchat, they don't use Facebook. Um, they, you, you, they're on Instagram, TikTok, or whatever it might be. So when you segment them into almost like three, um, rather than just saying, okay, here's millennials and thinking that millennials are um, a bunch of teenagers, <laughs> yeah. when you separate them into yeah. three different segments like this, Mm-hmm. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Thanks for going through that. I mean, so you just now talked about some of the challenges that mm-hmm. companies face in retaining them. So yeah. uh, they are seen as a uh, job hopping. I mean, in your experience, what do these uh, younger millennials, the Gen Zs, actually want from their jobs? The younger they are, the more they want flexibility in their job. Mm-hmm. So they want to be able to call shots as to when they work, where they work, and work at home is a great policy. And with everything that has happened, it did push a lot of companies to enforce that, not just with younger employees, but also with the older millennials, um, Gen X, baby boomers, or whatever it might be. So that is that, but they don't necessarily want to be stuck at home all the time. When they say we want to work at home is let us give us the laptop, give us the phone that can Mm -hmm. access a company internet Mm -hmm. so that we can take our laptop to the cafe during lunch hours. That's what they want. They don't want to be stuck at home office every single day. Um, Another thing that they want is they, um, we were having discussion around this before the interview, but they are very, very purpose driven. So millennials Mm -hmm. and Gen Z compared to other generational counterparts, they are a lot more purpose driven. Now um, purpose driven as well. They are, they are more, me, uh, meaningfulness driven as well more um there's a little bit of a nuance between them when i say purpose driven i mean it in the context of they want to be able to make a difference within the mm-hmm. organization and further on to the world um when you and when you are looking at studies around millennials and their values for corporate social responsibilities they want their employers to be good employers. They want their employers to not just worry about money. They want employers to make a difference in their community. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to meaningfulness, that's more within the organization. They want. They don't want to be doing menial tasks. So the fastest way to drive a millennial out of the organization is to get them to sort papers uh-huh. full time for yeah. Like, yeah. That's the fastest way to drive them out of the organization. Or yeah even if they're not out of the organization they're always going to be looking somewhere else so you have to um but when when you're looking at the meaningfulness part 
you have to give, give them a fit picture of okay how even though this is a little task here is how this relates to the organizational structure um strategic objective here is how you're making a difference within the organization here is why you are important to the team mm -hmm. so when you're able to play it like that then they're gonna stay but if you're just selling them store papers they're gonna be like this is stupid i yeah. don't know why i'm doing this yeah. and they are going to be leaving so yeah that mm. is the essence of what they want um i at the end of the day um these um labels millennials gen z or whatever they are really great understanding psychographics but we cannot forget that they are humans and all humans they have similar needs it's just that the priority list might be a little bit different at the end of the day all humans want to feel um acknowledged they want to help people they want to feel important so yeah and that's really that really pops out amongst millennial employees whether older or younger mm -hmm. as well as gen z employees yeah yeah, thanks so much for that, Claire. So, I mean, you work a lot with companies and engaging millennials. I mean, how do you help them or what's your advice to them in engaging millennials in their work? When it comes to engaging millennials in their work, funny enough, this is where I tell them to get rid of the labels. <laughs> and this is where <laughs> I tell them, look at them human to human and, uh, and then see where they are at, what do they want in their career, and how can we meet them in the middle ground? For example, so let's say when you're assigning a task to someone, yeah. if it is not aligned with their future goals, it's not if it is not aligned with their expertise, if it is not aligned with their interests, they are gonna there's a, gonna be a part of their brain that's gonna be daydreaming about what to eat um uh, what to eat while they're out with their friends instead yeah. of focusing on work well mm -hmm. as if they're super interested in the task this is totally aligned with their um, career goals and not only that they realize how this is going to contribute to their growth within the organization you can bet they are going to turn down their friend's um dinner invitation to say oh yeah. i need to finish this work because mm -hmm. this is really important to me yeah if that's not just for millennials, that is just human needs. And so that's why I tell organizations, get rid of the label and mm -hmm. zone into them as humans. What do they want? What gets them interested? And then see how, and then see how that makes a difference in terms of how they're showing up to work. Remind them how important they are, how they're contributing to the organization, and see how that makes a difference. It's just a simple human to human concepts, but unfortunately at the organizational level, it can be easy to forget about that because <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of people and um mm -hmm. and then it's the whole oh it's or it's professional environment organization. Well just because you you can be professional all you want, but you can also be a good human and establish a good human to human connection. Mm -hmm. So tip that I give to a lot of organizations. Yeah, yeah. So that that's really important, Claire. I mean seeing them as human rather than just a label like millennials. So as you help companies to engage them, I mean, what, what is your advice around developing the millennials and helping them to really unleash their fullest potential within the organizations they are at? Number one is a two-way street. And number two, it, I had something really old here, but somehow it flew over my head. Is that but right? another thing is, yeah, really, it's really about that customization based on what they want and so on. And also not being able to use specific techniques as well. Really, under, really helping them figure themselves out. That's a huge mm -hmm. part. That's what I wanted to say. But somehow I ended up giving an extra point instead of saying that. Yeah. But anyways, to going back, so to, um, to walk in reverse, 
figuring out what they want. I mean, it is a whole entire career. And, uh, and if you're looking at how long a person is working from the time they get into school and so on, we're looking at 30, 40 years of your time, lifetime, yeah. over here, if not a lot longer. And with that being said, so many things going on, so many things changing. And that also means that their interest and then their expertise might be changing as well. Mm -hmm. So from the talent development perspective, um, rather than have your younger employees say, I'm going to go back to school to pursue this, if the organization is able to show up and say, well, I know that you were, um, you have accounting background, but I know that you want to go back to school for finance. Or I know yeah. that you um, have social work background, but you want to get into healthcare policies. See how I can yeah. support them, whether through training, whether through a um, bridging program, or mm -hmm. whether through even like helping with their school and like see if they stay or not because they're guaranteed they're gonna stay i mean yeah. of course contract wise they have to stay if they do yeah. get help from organization in the capacity but they're staying that if that's the case and the other thing is really customize customizing so whether you're helping them create individual development plan um with their manager and with the employee themselves to figure out okay what is the future goals where are we lacking what are we going towards and what kind of trainings would be best suited for them come mm -hmm. from like again it's the human to human approach customize yeah. it for them as much as possible and um yeah that and then the other thing that just came up to me is really be mindful of their availability and all the everything that is going on in the organization here's what i mean by this a lot of organizations either they are training people all the time yeah or not at all there yeah. isn't that middle ground um so even though yes continuous training is important give them a time to apply and mm -hmm. give them a time to rest and give them it don't make training into another full-time job so that's yeah. my few cents on the talent development for millennials right that's great thank you so much claire I mean, be before we end it, was there anything else you wanted to add about employers working with millennials better? Employers working with millennials better. This is a, um, quite um, counterintuitive, quote unquote, statistic, um, even for a lot of organizations. And this is something that you might, uh, your community members might find surprising too, but when we're looking at retention rates of millennial managers versus non-millennial managers, yeah. non-millennial managers, we're looking at around like 30% resignation rates, while millennials, we're looking at maybe like 16%. Mm. Pretty shocking considering yeah, yeah, that yeah. oh they might be considered job hopping generation and mm -hmm. yes in non management position the resignation rates are a lot higher but really really understand that um, the more you, the more you trust your younger employees and this is this isn't just for organization it can be anywhere real um, any industries for that matter but the more you trust your younger employees, the more they are going to feel engaged and the more likely they are going to want to stay. It's just a simple human principle. Like if you show trust in someone, yeah. they're going to trust you back. Or, I mean, they're going to try to not let you down at least. So yeah, yeah. that's what I wanted to mention. Yeah, thank you so much for your time, Claire. It's been really helpful and I'm sure this will help many employers in becoming better in working with millennials. Thank you.